Welcome to The Money Show on Holton Wise TV. My name's Bailey, and I'm here to help you get your money right. Today we're gonna talk about debt. Everybody knows about the bad debt, but did you know there's also good debt? Well, if you didn't, we're here to explain it to you. Let's start off with debt in general. I have the definition on the screen for you, but basically in a nutshell, you borrow money, it builds interest, and that interest you have to pay back plus the money you borrowed. So what is the purpose of taking on debt that will ultimately cost you more money in the long run? In order to understand this, we must first understand the difference between good debt and bad debt. Normally, good debt is something with low interest rates and can make you some money in the end. Bad debt usually costs you some money with some pretty high interest rates. For example, somebody buys a house for 100000 and by the time they're done with it and sell it, they make 225000 So that was an investment in good debt. Bad debt is how us ladies like to go shopping, like Fashion Nova's one, swiping that credit card for some clothes, but then, oops, you forget to pay the full payment. Then you get hit with a pretty high interest rate, and we all know that's not fun. Never pay the minimum payment. If you do, you can look at the little chart on your bill every month and you're literally gonna be paying on it for freaking ever. Like, why would you do that? Just pay it off. To better understand the penalties of credit card interest rates, we have broken down this example. The average credit card interest rate for someone with fair credit is 22.84%. If you were to rack up $2,000 in credit card debt at this interest rate and paid the minimum amount of 2% or $40 per month, it would take 13.4 years or 161 payments in order to pay off that debt. In addition to this, you will also have accumulated $4,427.49 in interest. Now, looking at this in a more favorable way, if someone were to put $500 a month towards this debt, the total debt would be paid off in five payments, which would only result in $100.72 in interest. This means that if you decide to pay $500 a month instead of the minimum payment of $40 per month, you will save yourself $4,326.77, and you also will have paid the credit card debt off 156 months sooner. If you're in your 20s like me, if you use a store credit card, the interest rate can be even higher. For example, I had one that was 30% and it taught me to never use a store credit card again. On the other hand, what are credit cards good for? They are good for building your credit score. And having a higher credit score can do many great things for you. When analyzing one's credit score, the most common credit score range is 300 to 850. In other words, 850 is the best credit score one can have, while 300 is the worst. And a good credit score is anything from 700 to 749. The benefits one receives when having a good credit score include better chances for approval when applying for additional loans, saving money on interest, lower monthly loan payments, qualifying for higher limits and loan amounts, more credit card options, and the ability to shop around for the best terms available. One of the most important investments that one can make that requires a higher credit score is purchasing real estate. Like I said earlier, you can make a lot of money with real estate. Real estate, if you borrow money for a mortgage, you can get as low as a 4% interest rate on your mortgage, which is a hell of a lot better than a 30% store card. I think that coffee kicked in. I, did. <laughs> I think it kicked in a little bit. Taking out a loan to enter the real estate industry provides a lot of unique opportunities for people to make money. One of the most important aspects of real estate is that it introduces the idea of passive income. The other nice thing is, you can rent out your house, you can own it free and clear with no more debt on it. You can make money or you can just have somewhere to live and not own anything else on it. Another form of good debt is student loans. It's really not bad with an interest rate of 5.8% when you're investing in yourself and a better future and a career that's gonna make you more money than what you're spending. Another form of good debt is investing in a business. You're taking a little bit of risk, but in all reality, you're setting yourself up for a bigger income in the future. One more thing I'd like to mention. You wanna pay off all the bad debt and then you wanna invest in the good debt. You don't wanna keep taking a loss with the bad when you could just be investing it all in the good. When your bad debt outweighs your good debt, you become part of a never ending cycle. Even if the good debt you take on ultimately outweighs your bad debt, this is still seen as a risk tolerance strategy. 
because the interest you are accruing is digging a deeper and deeper hole that's harder to get out of. When looking at debt as a whole, the most risk adverse strategy one can have is to get to ground level and then decide what kind of debt you may or may not want. Well, that's all I got for you tonight, guys. Leave your thoughts and your comments below and hit that subscribe button so we can help you get your money right. Okay. <laughs> the door's like wide open over there. <laughs> that was so not what the thing said, but it was close enough. Alright, well we got we're gonna, <laughs> Sir. we're gonna go in detail of what's good debt and what's bad debt. Basically, bad debt would be motherfucker. Motherfucker. Um motherfucker. Sorry, bro, she is savage. <laughs> good debt? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing. You're just like Bad debt is high interest and deep. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Investment Properties for Sale show. My name's Bailey and I'll be your host. What the hell are you doing, bro? What? You said the viewers wanted to see a hot chick in a bikini. Yeah, Bailey's going to be the host of the new money show. I'm still going to host the Investment Properties for Sale show. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.